Hello everybody, it's summertime here in Phoenix, Arizona, and that means it's time to build some patios. This is the biggest one I have done so far, and I want to show you the steps taken to build a patio like this. Having the right tools for the job is always great, but it's also just as important to protect yourself. I am making an opening in the stucco so that I can waterproof this patio using counter flashing. This involves using two pieces of metal flashing to create a barrier between the stucco and the patio. I cut into the stucco 9 inches wide to fit the ledger board and counter flashing materials. After removing the first piece of stucco, I was very happy to see that I practically landed in the middle of the top plate. These are a series of wooden studs that run horizontally across the house. The ledger board is usually attached to the vertical wooden studs of the house, which are commonly spaced 16 or 24 inches apart. There were sections of the stucco that had OSB board behind it, which I needed to remove to make room for the ledger board. I then began to work on fitting my first piece of metal flashing into the stucco. The first metal flashing is called a Z-bar flashing. It has a 3 inch tall fence that is inserted behind the stucco and a smaller 2 inch lip that will go over the second piece of flashing. The second piece of flashing is called an L flashing and it also has a 2 inch fence that will go underneath the C-bar flashing and a longer lip that will go over the patio roof. Next, I began to pre-drill the holes on the ledger board for my anchors. Since the ledger board will be anchored to the top plate, I decided to use two lag screws for every 24 inches. They will be 8 inches apart and offset from one another to avoid splitting the board. If I was not anchoring to the top plate, I would have my lag screws similar to what you see in this picture from my previous patio build. Two screws on every stud of the house. I am now putting up the ledger board in place. The ledger board will simply sit on top of the stucco and it will be anchored into the top plate using 5 inch long lag screws. Above the ledger board will sit a 3 inch spacer that will provide support for the two pieces of flashing. To continue extending the ledger board, I made a 45 degree cut on the second board to fit it behind the first ledger board. Getting the first piece of flashing behind the stucco can be difficult sometimes because the staples used on the stucco. These staples can be cut using a small hand tool, but I prefer to go in with the reciprocating saw to make quick work of them. I insert the final piece of C-bar flashing and make sure it overlaps the one before it, and then proceed to add the spacer that will hold the flashing in place, and finally put the last board to complete the ledger board installation. Once that is done, I can begin attaching the rafter hangers. The rafter hangers will be anchored to the ledger board every 24 inches, which is the maximum length allowed for 2x6 rafters. I sandwich a piece of rafter onto the hanger using a clamp and then anchor the hanger to the ledger board. It's time to begin working on the posts and the beams that the rafters will sit on top of. I am using a Bosch hammer drill with a 5 8 masonry bit. I use water to cool down the drill bit and to help bore out the hole. The bit has a piece of blue tape which will help me know when I have reached the correct depth, which is roughly 4 inches depending on how deep the concrete was poured and if footings for the posts were made. I do the outer post base first as they will help me to line up the middle ones. Once the hole is made, I use a 5 8 anchor bolt to secure the post base to the concrete and then pull a rope line between the two. One question I often get asked in my patio videos is how do you calculate the spacing for the posts? Your outer post should be at least 6 to 12 inches from the edge of the concrete. After that, you can start to position the remaining two bases so they are all equally spaced apart. The height of my posts needs to be the height of the ledger board minus the height of the horizontal beam minus however many inches I need to pitch the roof. I set up the first post using metal stakes and wooden studs and use my level to make sure it's perfectly straight on all sides 
and then do the same thing for the other posts. I then pull a rope line between them to calculate the height of my inner posts, but if your concrete floor is level, then your posts will also be the same height. The first horizontal beam is cut in length to fit between the two inner post caps, but the outer beams can remain full length to later be cut down or shaped however needed. We have been a family owned business for more than 10 years, and today my mom and dad came to help me install the rafters. The rafters need to have a small notch made to lay flat on the rafter hanger and on the horizontal beam. It's hard to describe the angle at which you need to cut them, but the goal is to have them lay flat across the beam. It's important to note that you can also notch the fascia board or notch the horizontal beam depending on what look you are trying to achieve. I began installing the OSB boards starting from the center to help align the rafters. I am using a Senko 2 inch 16 gauge stapler to staple the boards onto the rafters. The OSB boards come with black lines to help you align the rafters, but I always check with my measuring tape to make sure my rafters are exactly 24 inches apart. Another reason I install the middle boards first is to help me measure how long my outer boards need to be as neither a whole or half piece will fit due to the irregular patio roof size. I forgot to get a good shot of this, but I use sheathing clips to install the OSB board. These help to keep your boards leveled between rafters and keeps them evenly spaced apart. The rafters are 12 feet long, but I cannot attach the fascia board to them without first cutting them back. I measure the thickness of my fascia board and cut back the rafters the same amount so that I have 12 feet of length with the fascia board attached to the front of the rafters. I also trim back the fascia board to the correct length while cutting at a 45 degree angle. I do the same thing for the opposite side and anchor the fascia board to the front of the rafters. Each rafter is attached to the beam with a hurricane tie. This is a 1x2 spacer that will go around the edge of the patio roof to separate the metal roof edge from the fascia board. What you are seeing is the base sheet already installed. I forgot to record this part for this patio build, but I will insert footage from my previous video to show you how that is done. One thing I did different from the previous video is that I began the first row with a half sheet so that I could start the top cap sheet with a whole piece. This material is self-adhering and the way you apply this to the roof is by peeling back the plastic film which causes the material to stick to the surface of the boards. You need to be careful as you peel the film so that the material does not move and once you have it all out, simply walk over it to help it stick to the surface. The plastic film is divided in two parts. Just like I'm peeling away on this side, the other side also needs to be peeled away. This process is repeated until you reach the top of the patio roof. Now, just real quick, people asked me several times in the previous patio video where I get this material. You can buy them at Home Depot. However, not all Home Depot stores sell them. This one you are seeing is the base sheet, the black one you just saw me lay down. And this is the cap sheet. It comes in white and tan colors and the prices of this material has increased by at least $20 since the video was recorded. The roof edge is then nailed onto the parameter of the patio roof. The roof edge can be bent around the corner by cutting the top portion and folding one piece onto the other. The cap sheet is laid down on the roof just like the base sheet. But I want to show you how to overlap the rows together. I peel back some of the plastic on both the bottom and top rows, making sure to not let them stick to one another. When the rows are joined together, the adhesive between the two are bonded and it's no longer possible to separate them. The plastic film is then evenly pulled from the bottom and top row, making sure that neither of them gets stuck. While I'm doing this, my helper is stepping on the overlap, making sure that the rows are being pressed together. This process is repeated until we reach the top of the patio roof. 
In my first patio video, I had already placed the L metal flashing that will sit below the C bar flashing. This time, I decided to put the L flashing last once the cap sheet was laid down. In order to do this, I need to slide the L flashing below the C bar while also making sure it does not get stuck on the cap sheet adhesive. And with both metal flashings now in place, I can finally peel back the last plastic film so that the L flashing will bond with the cap sheet. And this is what counter flashing is all about. Water coming down the stucco will be repelled away with the C bar flashing that sits behind the stucco and it will then come down to the L flashing that sits below the C bar and over the patio roof. Thank you for clicking on my video and watching me build this. If you thought this was helpful or interesting, I kindly ask that you please subscribe to my channel for more hands-on content and give this video a like.